Hi, my name is Mary Catherine Gallagher and I'm an ecologist with Wetland Surveys Ireland. We've been working on wetlands in County Longford for the past four years or so. Um, we started off in 2017 doing a desk-based study um, looking at identifying wetland sites across the county and as a result of that study we identified 218 wetland sites across the county accounting for about 18% of the land cover. And even though wetlands are obviously really widespread in County Longford, very little was actually known about the vast majority of those wetland sites. So since then, um, in the summers of 2019 and 2020, we've been out doing detailed field surveys on a small number of those sites. So we're now beginning to build up a more detailed picture of the wetlands across County Longford. Wetlands are, like the name suggests, wet places. So the most usual definition that you'll find of wetlands is an area where the water table is at or near the surface and they can be wet throughout the entire year, so continually saturated, or they can be just wet on a seasonal basis, so areas that are just flooded every now and again. And you get wetlands all over the world. You get them in freshwater habitats, marine habitats, and in between as well in areas with brackish water. So some of the most common wetland habitats you're probably familiar with are things like rivers, uh, reed swamps, lakes, bogs, and then some more sort of um, exotic wetland habitats are things like mangroves, coral reefs, uh, rice paddies. So that's an example of an artificial type of wetland habitat, so it's man-made. So Longford is quite a low-lying county and it's obviously in the Midlands of Ireland. So it's low-lying nature, the soils that you have there, the climate all lead to really good conditions for a whole variety of wetland types. So you have things ranging from rivers and lakes with fringing reed swamps to uh, marshes and fens. But Longford is probably best known for its raised bog uh, wetland habitats. So Longford actually has some examples of raised bogs that are of both national and international importance and that's something to be really proud of because previously like historically raised bogs would have been quite widespread both in Ireland and across northern Europe but uh, now we're at a stage where only 90 only one percent of raised bogs are left remaining in their intact state so it's something really special that you have in County Longford to have raised bogs of good quality left. So wetlands are really important, not just because of the diversity of very unique plants and animals that live there, but also because they provide us with a wide range of ecosystem services. So ecosystem services are things that are basically provided to us by nature. So the types of ecosystem services that we get from wetlands are things like provision of clean water. So a lot of um, wetland plants remove pollutants from the water. Um, things like air quality regulation, flood regulation, um, provision of food, fuel, building materials. There's a really exhaustive list of things that wetlands do. Um, another really important one is uh, storing carbon and the role that plays in climate regulation. And then there are also some other services provided to us by wetlands that are equally as important, uh, but maybe we don't think about them so much. So things like the amenity value of wetlands. Um, for example, if you think of places that you like to go for a walk or places where you like to be when you're out in nature, you might be surprised to realise they're often associated with wetland habitats. Um, as well as that, there's kind of an artistic or inspirational value with these habitat types. So maybe uh, someone being inspired to do photography on a wetland, uh, someone painting a picture, anything like that. And as well as that, there's a cultural aspect to our wetland habitats too. So you'll often find wetlands featuring in myths and folklore. They might be associated with, um, you know, um, places of worship uh, and things like that. So there's a, a real wide range of things that we get from wetlands. And we often kind of take them for granted. Some of these things are actually essential to our day-to-day -day living, like the clean water. And then some of those ecosystem services just make our lives a little bit better. Things like the amenity value and the inspirational value of wetlands. And the sad thing is that 
unless we conserve and preserve our wetlands, they won't be able to continue to provide us with these ecosystem services. So, unfortunately, wetlands have traditionally been viewed as quite unproductive areas. Um, maybe they've been seen as wastelands. And so they've often been altered, changed and converted into a different type of land use. And that means that they can no longer provide us with those ecosystem services. So the plants and animals that live in wetlands are specifically adapted to cope with living in very wet conditions. So they have lots and lots of adaptations to, to deal with living in these wet conditions. A lot of plants tend to grow up quite tall into the air so that they can actually get oxygen from the air instead of trying to get it from the water. And an awful lot of plants will also float kind of at or near the surface of the water so they can get as much sunlight as possible to photosynthesize. Here on the bog, the plants and animals not only have to cope with living in wet conditions, they also have to cope with really low levels of nutrients. So this living layer of the bog that we see here is on top of a really deep layer of peat. And because that's so deep, the roots of the plant can't access the mineral rich groundwater. And that means that they're solely relying on rainwater, which is nutrient poor and quite acidic as well. So they have that extra problem to deal with. Um, this here is bog cotton, and these have a special adaptation to cope with the low oxygen levels. So they have these extra big air spaces uh, called arinchnema in their roots, and they use that to get as much oxygen into their roots um, as possible. Over here we have another very typical plant that you'll find on raised bogs. So this is sphagnum moss. It's actually known as the bog builder because over time as these sphagnums decay and die, they're what form the peat layer underneath which we have this living layer of bog. And as you can see, if I squeeze this moss, sphagnums are able to hold an awful lot of water. They can hold up to 20 times their own weight in water. And because of this, they were actually used during war times to dress wounds. So there's kind of a historical or cultural aspect to these plants as well. Um, along with the plants, you get a wide diversity of animals on uh, wetland habitats as well. A lot of animals might not live in wetlands all the time, but they might rely on them every now and again. So if you think about maybe bats, they don't specifically live in wetlands, but they'll forage along rivers and streams. So they rely on wetlands for their feeding. But then some animals are completely reliant on wetlands. So if you think about our amphibian species that we have in Ireland, we just have three native amphibians in Ireland, and they're all reliant on wetland habitats. So it's really important for their survival that we continue to conserve and protect our wetlands. So unfortunately, wetland habitats are under an awful lot of pressure, not just in Ireland, uh, but globally. So it's estimated that between 1975 and 2015, 30% of wetlands disappeared. And wetlands are thought to be disappearing three times as fast as forests. And like we spoke about earlier, the plants and animals that live in wetlands are uniquely adapted to live in those environments. They, they can't survive in a different type of habitat. So when wetlands disappear, those plants and animals will disappear too. And because of that, 25% of wetland plants and animals are currently at risk of extinction. So it's really important that we um, try to conserve the wetlands that we have left and also try and protect and restore the ones that have already been damaged. So the main threats or the main damaging activities that affect wetlands are drainage and changes in land use. So that's going back to that perception that wetlands aren't valuable or productive habitats, um, draining them and drying them out and converting them into something else. Um, some other threats facing wetland habitats are pollution, changes in water supply, the spread of invasive species, and climate change as well is a big one. So a specific example of how uh, human alteration to wetland habitat leads to a loss of ecosystem services is the example of draining peatland habitats. So we're on a bog at the moment and bogs have often been cut and drained um, sometimes to change them into different land use. So for example, maybe draining a bog to turn it into a forestry plantation. And in its intact state, 
bogs are amazing carbon stores. So even though these peatlands and bogs only cover 3% of the Earth's surface, they actually store 30% of our soil carbon and they store even more carbon than forests do. So they're really important in terms of carbon storage and our fight against climate change. But when you drain or cut a bog, it actually starts emitting carbon into the atmosphere. So it's contributing to that problem. And as well as that, when you drain the bog or alter it, it can't carry out the other ecosystem services to the same level as it used to anymore. So for example, in its intact state, um, bogs play a really important role in flood regulation. So they almost act like a sponge. So they can absorb water when there's an awful lot of rainfall or when a river is in really high flow. And then in times of drought, they can actually slowly release that water back out. So they're acting like a sponge, absorbing and releasing water. But if you imagine that sponge and you imagine coming along and cutting it, just like draining the bog, the sponge can't hold water like it used to anymore. So it can't regulate flood. As well as that, a drained bog doesn't have the same amenity value anymore. It won't have the same inspirational value. Um, and as it dries out, it changes land use. It just loses all of those ecosystem services. So there are lots of things that individuals can do to help to protect and conserve wetlands. There are some really simple things that you can do in your own home, like using peat-free compost in your garden, maybe switching to making your own compost, being mindful of the amount of water that you're using in your household as well can help to protect wetland habitats. And then there are other things that you can do maybe more outside in your community. So things like talking to other people and spreading knowledge and awareness about the importance of wetlands, um, continuing to enjoy the amenity value of wetlands, but doing so in a way that doesn't damage or um, contribute to the pollution or degradation of the, these wetland systems. Um, you can also get involved with local groups that might be um, carried out, uh, involved with nature conservation, um, maybe specifically working together with a local wetland site in your locality. Um, you can also become involved with um, recording plants and animals in wetlands and submitting this information uh, to places like the National Biodiversity Data Centre, um, building on the information that we have about these important habitats.